Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keen Mechanics channel. In this episode I'm going to bring you a new vehicle. This is a Mercedes ML350 CDI. You're going to have ML320 E-Class, S-Class, all the 3 liter OM642 engines. Unfortunately they all have the same common problem and if you notice any oil on your driveway, any oil leaks from underneath the engine gearbox that area is going to be probably 99% this uh, oil cooler. Now the oil cooler is positioned very deep inside the V of the engine in the valley of the engine and uh, it's going to be a complete pig of a job to get to it. It's very labor intensive when you're doing this job the first thing you want to do is to drain the coolant and then we're going to drain the oil um you're going to have a bit of contamination there when you open the oil cooler so you have to change the oil and the coolant um, on this vehicle so i don't want to waste too much time with the intro here i've already spent over more than a minute of your time if you know my channel you know i like to do a good job i like to do step by step so i'm going to do my best to show you the whole process and uh, let's not waste any time as i like to say and let's get started so the first thing obviously you want to do is uh, start by opening the bonnet there's a red latch underneath the, the driver side. You just press on this and this will open the bonnet. So um, we'll start with the removal of the engine cover. I like to use one of these Milwaukee engine bay lights. Finding a great job. Just a note before you start any major work on your car. Make sure to disconnect the battery and the battery, excuse the mess, <laughs> this is not my car by the way. Um, I can keep my cars nice and clean. So just remove this, this under the driver's seat if you're in UK and you have a right side steering wheel. So what we're going to be doing here, we're going to disconnect the negative terminal. And this will keep things right. In the next step, we're going to remove this intake manifold. Um, this is obviously the pipe that sucks air from the air boxes with the air filters into the turbo here. So I'm going to remove these uh, Jubilee clips here and disconnect the MAF sensors. And then we'll just follow the, the steps one by one. The first thing we're going to remove these uh, mass airflow sensors, remove the cable. And uh, if you can't do it by hand, use a little screwdriver take these out sometimes they could be a little bit uh, stuck We're going to continue with the removal of the air box. This is the air filter housing. There are a couple of E10 bolts on each side. This is the first bolt and this is the second bolt here for the removal of the air box. So I'm going to Take this one out. So we need to remove this cold air intake pipe to the filter and then this will allow us to remove the air box. We've got these two pins here, that's the second air box. I've raised the vehicle up on my ramp here, but really you don't really need to raise the vehicle. I'm doing it um, so I can film this properly. And uh, if you don't have a ramp, you can just lie on the ground. You have plenty of clearance. So let me show you where the, the drain plug is for the radiator on the ML350 CDI. This is W164 model. So if you see the red knob, this is your valve. So you can 
um, open and close this valve and then the black bit underneath this is where um, you're gonna drain the coolant from I've got a plastic tube I'm gonna insert this tube So that's the idea, I've got the tube in place, now I'm going to open this valve and we're going to drain the coolant into a bucket. Don't forget to open the coolant tank cap and then all the fluid will drain properly. You want to use E12 spanner. These are pretty unique spanners. I've never had to use one of these before on a different vehicle. So when you're working on Mercedes, you're going to have some slightly different tools.
I'm gonna show you how to remove these fuel return lines. So you wanna pull the little cap up. So after you lift these caps, you wanna pull on the return line and then take it out. So this is the cap. You wanna pull it up. Then when you push it down on the return line on the metal pipe, then you will just push the cap back down and that will lock it in place. I've been trying to remove the bolts on the turbocharger and it's super super difficult because the previous owner um, had a engine replacement and the garage that did the job the previous time didn't actually put ceramic grease on the bolts and they didn't replace the bolts so you can see um, <clears throat> I nearly damaged the head of this bolt trying to remove it um, had to heat it up I tried different various tools nothing worked and eventually I had to bend a, a pipe and then use a internal Torx spanner, insert it in there and then lift it this way so I can loosen. Now this was the first bolt uh, which is on the kind of on the top of the turbocharger. The second one is even more awkward so I've had to make a second tool. So I haven't managed to take it off yet. But I just wanted to show you, I welded um, my E12 socket to another, this is a standard, um, I think 10 mil 3.8 socket, just so I can put the ratchet on it to give me some offset. And uh, I'm just going to insert it, otherwise it won't clear 
from the exhaust pipe here. So I'm going to try and insert it this way. Okay, so I have just, just about five, six millimeters of clearance here uh, beside this sensor. So I'm going to, what I'm going to try and do is put a pipe on this ratchet and then try and open it that way. But I will heat this bolt with uh, my torch just to make it a bit easier to take off. So far I managed to remove the three really difficult to access bolts at the back of the turbo which connects the turbo to the manifold. There is a metal gasket here between the turbo and the exhaust manifold and now we're gonna try and remove this clamp.
there's one thing I recommend to do before you open the intake manifolds and the valve ports. You don't want any dirt um, getting inside. We're going to try and show you what I've got here. So I'm going to clean it up with some compressed air. So there's a lot of leaves and dust, debris, sand, all sorts of stuff. You can actually see inside here there's old broken cable ties, leaves, dust, dirt, as I said, an awful lot of rubbish as it's just a complete mess, oily mess as well. So we're gonna have to give the top here a blast and after this we're gonna lift the intake manifolds and then um, remove the rest of the component to get to the oil core.
After removal of the intake manifold, I pre-soaked the manifolds with Mr. Muscle oven cleaner. Now the next stage will be to clean these valve ports and they're absolutely clogged up. I noticed some of the some of the valves are so clogged up you can't even see them properly. This is uh, already pre-soaked here. I'm just checking to see which valves are closed um, and uh, I'm gonna fill them up with brake cleaner and then I'm gonna agitate that. So make sure obviously when you're doing this, you're doing this on the valves that are closed, not, uh, not the open ones. Otherwise all the dirt will leak inside and that's exactly what you wanna avoid. Um, sorry for the poor camera angle or sorry, the, the, the poor view. This is uh, just pure carbon and oil. So it's very dark and you can't really see very well. I'm gonna do this first and then I'm gonna do the second and then I'll keep checking which valves are closed and then whatever's open then I'm just going to use my ratchet with a 27 mil socket on the crankshaft here and just keep closing them one after another. Normally you have four out of six maybe um, that will be closed and two open. So I'm going to start with the uh, potentially number one and number four here then see how we get on.
this after the first stage of cleaning. So just uh, pre-soaked overnight with Mr. Muscle Oven Cleaner. So this is the first stage and I'm going to pre-soak it again for a couple of hours and then give it another blast. So that will get rid of all the, all the major carbon and oil deposits and then take my fall. I wanted to show you um, how well the oven cleaner cleans. So you can see the way the intake manifold was lying down. So there was a lot of uh, chemical on this side and on this side there was very little chemical. And see how hard this is to clean even with the pressure washer. And uh, you can see the difference. I'm going to pre-soak it again, leave it on the other side and this will be as good as new. I wanted to show you the clean parts. This is the left hand side manifold, this is the right hand side manifold. They have been cleaned with uh, Mr. Muscle oven cleaner twice. I did two stage cleaning. You could probably do another third stage but this customer didn't want to spend too much money and didn't uh, again. Stage two means these are 99.9 .9 clean. You can see inside it's uh, almost as good as new. So there's no really point to go into such detail. It's an older vehicle, the customer doesn't want to spend too much money on it. Uh, but at least we got the, the cleaning done. And um, these are the old seals. You can tell they were never replaced. Um, it's interesting case here with this customer. So he had um, engine replacement about four years ago. And uh, when this happened, he told his mechanic to replace these O-rings on the oil cooler. The mechanic said he did, but obviously four years later we are finding out that he actually didn't. Um, so just to consider something, um, I'm trying to teach you guys how to do this yourself. And I know it's not always easy because you may not have the garage or the tools, but at least I'm giving you an idea here to what to look for. And if you think you can tackle this job yourself, go for it. It's labor intensive. But again, like anything, it's not rocket science. You have step-by-step -step tutorial and guide here so you can follow it to the T. Now, let's get uh, everything cleaned up in the engine bay. And we're going to install this cooler. We're going to torque the bolts at 12 Newton meters. These are T30 bolts. I believe there's 10 of them. And uh, then after that, we're going to install the rest of the parts, intake manifolds, and we'll put this together. I'm going to set my torque wrench to 12 Newton meters. I'm going to torque all these 10 bolts. I'm going to use this router bit sharpening pad. This is diamond and it's, I believe, 1000 to 2000 grit, so it's super light. And then I'm just going to go around the surfaces here just to clean it up a little bit. Thank you. 
legs they're a great job now I have to say these are really really good design gaskets you can just clip them in place they will not fall off you want to line them up as best as you can keep them nice and clean no grease on them we're now gonna try and put this together This is a brand new bridge by the way, new o-rings and what you want to do is you want to install some silicone grease on them just so they can slide in and they don't get cut. I've seen many people, I've seen many people not doing this and then they have to do the job twice to take the manifold off again and fit one of, one of these again and grease them up. It starts leaking coolant and then it makes a mess. So do this at this point to avoid disappointment later on. In the next step, we're gonna torque the intake manifold and I'm gonna show you the pattern we're gonna do this and uh, the Newton meters are 16. So the torque for the bolts on the intake manifold for both sides is 16 Newton meters. And this is the pattern we're gonna do them with. So we're gonna start with the right hand side here. So this is bank two, one, two, three, four in the middle. And then, yeah, just follow this pattern
install this gasket at this point as well it has these two clips that just push in place and then that's sitting here so you don't have to worry about dropping it and installing it from the back so let's go ahead and put this turbo in place Just make sure to align these two bolts first. As you can see, the gasket is sitting in place. It's perfectly aligned. So we're gonna install these T45 torques first. And then we're gonna apply the other bolt at the back. I'm going to torque the two bolts, these are T45 that hold the turbo to the oil feed and oil drain pedestal. Um, as I mentioned these are 40, T45 torques, so the torque procedure for these is 30 Nm first and then when you apply 30 Nm first then you have a second stage at 50 Nm. I've done the first stage, now I'm going to apply 50 Nm and that should be these two bolts done. Let's open these air boxes now and replace the air filter. I'm going to be using Blueprint and the part number is ADU172202. As usual, I'm going to put these in the description. Drain the oil, open the engine filler cap, this will speed up the process a little bit and then let the oil drain. And find the oil filter housing, 
which is right here. We're gonna loosen this and then this will allow the oil to flow even faster. I'm gonna use one of these universal tools as I don't have correct uh, cup for this oil filter housing. I always like to place a rag around the oil filter so we don't uh, make a mess here and we don't make a massive spill. This is the oil filter that I will be using, it's Blueprint, let me see if I can focus on the part number, ADA102104, you've got the oil seal which you're gonna replace, we've got the oil filter itself and that's basically what's included in the kit. Now the next step is to pour the new oil in the oil filler. I've got 10 liters of oil, I'm going to need about 8.5. I'm using Fabio Long Life 5W30 and the uh, part number for this oil is 32943. So this is for the 5 liter bottle. Time to add some coolant in the cooling system. I'm going to be using Febby. This is a 10 liter drum and should be enough to fill the whole system. I think it probably will take about between 6 and 8 liters depending on what you've drained and how you drained it um, and obviously how many components you've, you've removed on the engine. Um, as I said this is a 10 liter bottle pre-mixed and it's good for minus 35 degrees. So I'm going to open the expansion tank and let's, um, let's add some coolant. Once you fill the coolant tank to the top, there's a little notch here, you see it. Uh, when it gets to the top, just stop, start your vehicle, let it heat up to uh, operating temperature, let it cool down, then check again on top if you need to top up. And that's really it. Now we're gonna tidy up here, put the cover, and that's the job done. So hope you enjoyed this video, if you do like it hit thumbs up and subscribe if you're not a subscriber and I'll see you guys in the next one.